In 2023, we saw Jamie Winkup and Roland Dane both make comments about the need for more young guys to be in the sport. I have an issue with it. It's this idea that there weren't any young guys being brought into the sport, and that's just a lie. Every year since 2002, and probably before then as well, there's been a rookie in the championship. There's a constant influx of the very best, or the best with money, or the best available due to connections and all that. There's always reasons why a young guy gets the opportunity in the main game. There's a there's just a misconception that there's that young guys aren't getting the opportunities to get into the main game like they should be. But it's just not true. The last two years in 2022 and 2023, young guys have been getting opportunities in race winning championship contending cars. Brock Feeney and Matt Payne. Brody Kostecki and Will Brown coming through who have like Brody won the championship. Will Brown's gone to triple eight to replace Shane Van Giersbergen. Plenty of young guys coming through. And the only re- the only thing that changed in the last couple of years is that the championship contending teams have started to look at the young guys coming through because you can't just keep on signing a guy who's at the peak of his powers and he's going to be in his late 20s, early 30s. You can't just keep signing those guys because at some stage you're going to kind of run out of that top talent. And while there is a lot of there are a lot of experienced drivers in the category, that's to its credit. In the last 20 years, we've seen a replacement of the original old guard before before supercars became modern supercars. It was the Australian Touring Car Championship. In the early 2000s, we say goodbye to Larry Perkins. We said goodbye to Tony Longhurst, you know, Glenn Seaton and Mark Scaife. The guys who were racing in the 80s and the 90s, those guys have gone. And the guys that debuted in the mid-2000s and onwards built up 15-year careers, which you couldn't do in the 80s and 90s. You pretty much had to run your own team. We are now getting to a stage, 20 years on, these older guys, you got James Courtney, Will Davison, have had very long careers and very successful careers and are now at the right at the end of their of their careers but i don't think it's to the sports credit that we start chucking them out just because we want young guys in that's not how it works you don't just like who are you going to sign the guys that are coming through are probably the best available there are examples that are going to be racing in super 2 this year that probably should be in the main game Um, like Kai Allen and maybe Cooper Murray. Ryan Wood got the step up, and he definitely should have. What else were you going to do, win the championship in Super 2? No, you proved you can do it. Up you go. And Jackson Evan gets gets a shot. That's good. That's what we want. Everybody comes in, they they have a go, and see what they end up with. So we had four championship contenders in 2023. We had Van Giersbergen and Feeney for Triple Eight, and we had Brown and Kostecki for Erebus. Three of those four guys are all in their 20s, and they debuted in the last three, four years, and and that was a first. Ten years ago, in 2013, the top four in the championship were all in their 30s. They were at the peak of their powers. Will Davison, Mark Winterbottom, Jamie Wincup, and Craig Lowndes. Maybe not Craig Lowndes, but you know he came second, so he did a great job. Then you got ten, 10 years later, Tickford aren't championship contenders. Triple Eight still are. But Jamie Winkup and Craig Lowndes are retired, so they got Shane Van Giersbergen, who they brought in to conti- to keep Triple Eight up the front, and he was a bit younger than Winkup and Lowndes, so that was helpful for them to keep it going, because I guess they couldn't find someone who was really, really good at that time. But most of the rookies over the last 20 years have not debuted for those championship teams. They've debuted for the mid-pack and the back markers because those are the teams that are taking chances on the young guys. So this attitude that, oh, there's not enough young guys being brought in, someone needs to take a punt on them. It has never been the case that they're refusing young guys, not in in modern supercars. In the 90s, when you had Cameron McConville and Craig Lowndes and Greg Murphy and Stephen Richards, those sorts of young guys coming through, that was a risk because you had your established guys you had your peter brock dick johnson larry perkins those guys were doing a great job they didn't seem to always take a chance but some of those guys did like peter brock like to bring in brad jones and neil crompton 
he was all about that. He thought they need to be bringing young guys through, so he took those chances with his team. And Dick Johnson had a good thing going with John Bauer, so they just kept him on for as long as they could. And then things changed, and Dick got sick of driving and put his son in the car. That was a an iconic changing of the guard. Similar to Sir Larry Perkins passing it on to Jack Perkins, except then there was a lot of complications in that process. Like Larry retired at the end of 2002 and then did Bathurst 2003 and then that was the end of it for him. And then it was three years later that Jack got his debut at Bathurst in the Perkins car and things didn't work out so well for the team in the next few years. I think I think what annoys me the most is that it's sort of blissful ignorance on the part of Roland Dane and Jamie Winkup to say that oh, people need to take a punt on these young guys. These young guys are coming through are really good. What are you talking about? Like, your Brad Jones, your Tim Edwards have been taking punts on the young guys for the last 15 years. Who are you to say this is what it needs to be like when these guys have been... They've been doing it. Brad Jones' third car was like a permanent rookie car. When it first started, they debuted Carl Reindler, then they debuted David Wall, then Dale Wood, until... until when Tim Blanchard came along and then it changed and they got Macaulay Jones and Jack Smith. Brad Jones has debuted a lot of young drivers and Tickford has had a very successful junior program for the last 10 years. Chaz Moster, Cam Waters, Richie Stanaway, uh, Gary Jacobson came through that program, Jack LeBrock. So many of these guys coming through. Thomas Randall, Brock Feeney drove for Tickford. Triple A didn't find Brock Feeney. It was Tickford. They took the punt. Ran him at Bathurst in Courtney's car. The guys who are really taking the punts are actively scouting young guys. And Gary Rogers Motorsport was famous for it. Stephen Richards, Garth Tanderley. The list is as long as your arm. That team was known for it. And Matt Stone Racing have sort of made a point of being like that. You know, they've got Cameron Hill and they're backing him for, ne- for this year. Bryce Forward got his debut in the championship driving for driving for MSR with Todd Hazelwood in the Enduros. Tickford is incredibly proud of its junior program and its junior program has proved to be very successful. We got Zach Best, he's been, he's proven to be a solid steerer. Made a mistake at Adelaide that cost him the championship, but that was one mistake that he made all year. He's been you know, slugged for it. A lot of people saying he's just not good enough. Grove Racing took a punt on Matt Payne and that was a calculated move. They knew exactly what they were doing. That was incredible. Erebus have been taking punts on young guys ever since Anton Di Pasquale in 2018. They brought Ash Walsh into the sport in 2015. They brought... Shay Davies had a go. Aaron Russell had a go. Erebus has sort of become synonymous with youth from signing these young drivers and giving them a go. Now it's a championship contender. It's less ready to take those sorts of risks. Um, But also, you know, Jack LeBrock did a great job. It's time to see whether he can really battle for the championship sitting on your high horse telling everybody how everything should be done i think that's just most annoying is that triple a taking credit for bringing in the young guys when they brought one young guy in and it was brock feeney and they weren't even the first super two or super three or anything to bring him in they brought him in after somebody else took and that was tickford they went yeah we'll run brock feeney and brock feeney was impressive in super three It was his first year, and then once he'd worked out how to win, he just started winning lots, and he won the championship, and Tickford went, this guy's good. It wasn't the best year in 2020, but because that was a COVID year, it wasn't the usual sort of year. Some people struggled more than others. I mean, Triple Eight took a punt on Ange Mazuris. I'd never heard of him until they they put him in their car, and I thought, what the hell have they done that for? Triple Eight have historically signed young guys that no one's ever heard of. Where did Brenton Grove come from? He was running his own thing, and then all of a sudden he's driving a Triple Eight car. But he only did that for one year. Yeah, I think I think more credit needs to be given to the the teams that have actually been doing the hard work over the years, rather than the teams that have been. You don't hear Barry Ryan saying anything about, oh, people should be bringing in young guys all the time. He doesn't because he said, this is how we felt at the time, and like Betty said in the inside line. I didn't want to sign Anton because it was a risk. He had someone else to get good points, and Barry said, no, no, this is going to be worth it. And it was. And then from that, after Anton left, then Dave left, 
they had been running Will Brown for a few years, so they knew that he was worth it, and they'd already decided to promote him, whether as a third entry or as one of the two cars. And Brody had always had been so impressive at, in the f- the few rounds that he'd done before. He was it was time to put him in. They even said that Betty was still hesitant about that then as well. Uh, the teams that are most prepared to take those chances are the mid pack teams, not the front running teams. But the only time you saw that, I mean, FPR took a big risk for 2006, but it probably didn't feel like it was going to be a big risk because. Jason Bright was ninth in 2005, and that was the best they could get. And they then suddenly everything was... All the stars lined up for 2006, and Mark Winterbottom was very impressive. He'd just been driving in an older, underdeveloped car. Suddenly he's in a top-line car, and he's winning races. You know, and Brad Jones Racing this year have, have signed up... The, these two guys were racing Trans Am last year. They've been brought into Super 2 uh, through Tom Williamson's the Racing Academy, and I'd never heard of these young guys, but there they are, and BJR has been doing that for ages, Bring every time someone debuts in Super 2 at Brad Jones Racing, I've never heard of them, Lockie Dalton jumped in, I'd never heard of him, and they've been bringing women into the sport, they, like, what was it, Madison, Ellie Morrow, Madison something, BJR is very much about bringing young guys through, I will agree with one thing that Roland Dane and Jamie Winkup have been suggesting beneath the rubbish that they've been talking about young guys and that's there is a change going those guys who've had 15 to 20 year careers it's coming to an end and the guys who are we're going through a a kind of a cleanse for in the last five six years we've seen Craig Lowndes we've seen Rick Kelly Jamie Winkup uh, now Shane Van Gisbergen's gone Scott McLaughlin's gone a lot of those, you know, Lee Holdsworth, is, Fabian Coulthard's gone, Garth Tander's gone. But it's always progressive. Change is always gradual. It's not going to be a big chop and change. But sometimes there is. Like in 2018, there were five rookies in the championship. James Golding, Richie Stanaway, Todd Hazelwood, Jack LeBrock, Anton Di Pasquale. Those guys came through. What Jack LeBrock replaced Will Davison, who was looking like he was not going to be in the championship in 2018, but he landed on his feet at 23 red. You know, Anton Di Pasquale re- replaced Dale Wood, who retired. But often often you will find there are guys who just didn't quite make the cut over however many years. Macaulay Jones replaced Tim Blanchard, who decided that he just wasn't, it wasn't worth continuing if he could do, if he could invest his efforts better elsewhere. You know, Richie Stanaway replaced Jason Bright, um, Todd Kelly retired. He brought Andre Heimgartner back from the brink. Like Will Davison replaced Glenn Seaton in 2006. Like Lee Holdsworth and Matt Payne. That was a, as a perfect example because they both shared a car at Bathurst, and Lee had already decided he was going to be retiring. But it was sort of it was very special because we knew Matt Payne was going to be in the main game for 2023, but we didn't know who his teammate was going to be. It was going to be Lee Holdsworth or Dave Reynolds, and Dave was kind of beating Lee all the time. Lee was good but he wasn't as good as David Reynolds that year. So Lee decided that he'd already had a taste of retirement and he was ready to hang up the helmet. He had a had a go and thought his efforts were better spent elsewhere. He'd had his time. He won Bathurst in 21 when he, when he, when he thought he was retired. He got another chance and then after that he said, yeah, I'm going to stay retired. Fabian Coulthard caught a comeback for 24, but... He decided not to because he wanted a multi-year deal. It's like, how big a chance do you want? Do you want a little chance or do you want a big chance? And a lot of these older guys don't want a little chance. They want a big chance. They want a multi-year deal. A young guy would be happy to jump in for the one year and if he proves his point, proves himself, he can be on for many years. Jack Smith, every single year, it was a discussion of whether he was going to do one more year. Except... I guess this year we assumed that he was going to continue, but no, he retired. 